So we were all created to have a relationship with God. Yes. That's the reason why he created us. Yeah. Each and every day in the cool of the eve, as Genesis says, that, hey, mom and dad. <laughs> God would come down in the cool of the eve yeah. to fellowship with Adam and Eve. Yes. He said, y'all can do anything that y'all want. Just don't do one thing. Don't eat the forbidden fruit. The devil was jealous of that relationship. He wanted to do anything that he could to come in and stop and break that relationship. I'm sorry for crying. I guess the reason why I'm crying is because the place that I've gone to recently that we, we, we don't always just start with having a great, awesome, spectacular relationship. Just like, just like I'm going to get sidetracked a little bit. Just like in a marriage, in a great marriage, in a great relationship, you can't just start off having this great, awesome, intimate relationship. It all starts off with, hi, how are you doing? Hey, what's your phone number? <laughs> you know, <clears throat> it starts off very simple. But as you spend time with each other, as you get to know each other, as you start hanging out with each other, and then you get married, and then you have years of going and growing together in the relationship, it can become an intimate relationship that is absolutely amazing, that there are absolutely no words to describe. Yeah. And that's what God wants us to experience with our relationship with him. So, temptation came, the serpent came, the devil came, said, hey, why don't you eat this forbidden fruit? So they did. God told them that if they did, what would happen? That they would die. Did they drop dead? No. no. They died spiritually. And when we die spiritually, that's what we call the fall of man. And as a result, the punishment from that sin is the relationship with God broke. It means yeah. eternal separation from God. Y'all think the devil liked that? Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> Scripture says, what the devil intends for evil, that God turns to good. And he works all things together for the good that love him. Yeah. So how much more do you think he wanted to increase and then broaden just that relationship that was limited to him coming down and hanging out with them in the cool of the eve. Yeah. I guess I'm jumping ahead in my message. I'll hear more about that. <laughs> so <clears throat> the devil liked that status of our relationship. God was pretty sad. Yeah. Don't you know there was a meeting in heaven just like in the beginning? Hey, let us make man in our image. Let us us make a plan. I could just imagine, this is not scriptural, but I could just imagine... Jesus saying, I'll go, I'll go take the punishment for them. So that's what God, that's what Jesus did. God commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Behold the Lamb of God, which takes away the sins of the world before they had the day of atonement. Where they go in there and do the blood sacrifice, and that would maybe cover the people's sins for the world. But with a covered of sin, how, there wasn't any relationship because it was still there. Mm. So Jesus came to the earth. He proved that he was God in the flesh, and Jesus chose the cross. Jesus cr chose the cross for me. Jesus chose the cross for y'all. Jesus chose the cross for y'all. He chose because he wanted to take the punishment for us because he loves us so much. So remember, Jesus was constantly saying, pray to the Father, me and the Father, I and the Father are one. I'm about my Father's business. He always referred to him as Father. But when he was hanging on the cross for us, it went from the status of being in a relationship of referring to it as father. 
He said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why is that? Y'all remember that, remember that shirt, that, that Christian t-shirt? It said, bench this, the sins of the world. That's what Jesus took upon him. He took our sin. He took the punishment for us. So where did he go? He went to hell. Jesus went to hell for us. Like you were saying a few weeks ago, hey, so glad we don't have to go to hell. I can't dance around like you. I'm not even going to try that. <laughs> Jesus took the punishment for us. He went to hell for us. He beat up the devil, took power, authority, yeah. dominion yeah. over mankind's yeah. destiny. <clears throat> then I'm not going. Scripture says, that he did not enter into the holy place with the blood of goats or calves, but by his blood. So I'm just going to say it this way. He took his blood up to the Father, said, Father, if anybody believes in me, let my blood be the sacrifice for them because I chose the punishment for them. I I am taking the punishment. So, Father, let my blood be the sacrifice for them. Yes. Amen? Amen? Okay. That was a good thing. That was the, that was the most important thing. Without that, we don't have redemption. Right. Without that, we are not justified. Right. So, Jesus did that for us. So, if we accept Him, we receive the free gift of salvation of Him taken the punishment for us. That's right. yeah. So, I need a volunteer. How about you, Michael? Michael, go back to the back. Mr. Mark is going to put on you a robe. So, this robe represents our life being stained with sin. Can y'all read any of those words? What we got up there? Come on up here, Michael. So idolatry, envying, variants spin around for us. There we go. Fornication, stealing, lying. These are not good. This is what broke the relationship with God. Remember, the enemy loves that place that mankind went to. Right. How do you like this, Michael? Does this feel good? No. no. Feels nasty? You don't, you don't like that? Have you done any of those? Oh. Yeah. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> remember, remember first John, uh, first John one, one nine. If we confess our sins, he go, go and forgive you. So you're fine. You are forgiven. <clears throat> This nasty robe stained your life with sin, and this is what keeps you from having the relationship with God that He wants you to have with Him. Right. Wearing this robe, can you live a life that's pleasing to God? Many people will take on the new robe, which you're going to see in a moment, but they'll take on that new robe, and then they'll put this back on. They're disconnected with God. They're not allowing the indwelling of Him on the inside to help them to live that life that's pleasing to Him. But this robe is nothing but nastiness, nothing but keeps you from having the relationship with God. So you come to church or somebody witnesses to you and tells you about God and about Jesus coming to the earth and dying on the cross for your sins and and asking them into your heart and you might, it might be a little step of faith and you say, you know what? I'm going to accept that gift. I'm going to ask Jesus in my heart. So when you pray that prayer of salvation, yeah. you then get to receive, you then get to yeah. receive Jesus' robe of righteousness. Yeah. Have you ever wondered what one of these look like? <laughs> God, God gave me this. He mailed it to me. No, nah, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> so, Michael, would you like to put on this robe of righteousness? Okay, so let's take that off. Let's take it off. 
Okay, just throw it on the ground right now. <clears throat> so, when you take off that old robe and you put on this, this new robe, <clears throat> it is not in anything that we do. It is what Jesus did on the cross for us. Jesus' blood is so powerful that it washes us and cleanses us, makes us whole, makes us right, makes us righteous before Him. We are justified. Y'all know what that justified means? What, what that, just as if we had never sinned. It is not, it's never in what we do. It is what, in what Jesus, when Jesus said, I'll go take the punishment for them. It's when we were take on his robe of righteousness. Yes. This, this right here is what killed, severed our relationship with God. It's what cut it off. The enemy would love for you to stay here. Unfortunately, there's, pro there's probably some people in here that are still wearing this robe of righteousness. I'm not saying that in a condemning way. I'm just saying that God wants you to take on this robe of righteousness. He wants you to accept you, him into your heart. He wants you to surrender your life to him. Yeah. You will be changed and you'll have this awesome relationship that God wants to take you to. Yeah. So... This is what stopped us from having that relationship with him. Wow. How much more do you think this is what grants us access to God's presence all the time that we can come before him without guilt, without shame, without condemnation, knowing that we are righteous before him. Romans 8, 1. There's therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. 1 John 1 9. Nation, you going to put it up for me? 1 John 1 9. That if we confess our sins to him, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to wash us and cleanse us of some unrighteousness? How about most? All. What does all mean? It means all. It means every bit. So now you know that when you're going to mess up, as Pastor Richard says. You're going to stub your toe. Yeah. But it's okay, though. You've been washed in the blood of Jesus, and if you confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive you. Yeah. Now you can come boldly before him, knowing that you're wearing the robe of righteousness when this nasty robe is what stopped you from having a relationship with him. How much more does this grant you, enable you to have access to God and have that relationship with Him that He desires, that we desire, and that, that and that's what comes from accepting Him into our heart. Right. Amen? amen. One, amen. <laughs> God wants us to surrender our hearts to Him. So many people will hear a message and yes, I want to ask Jesus in my heart, but they'll they'll have this they'll have this old robe on, but then they'll try to put this other robe on at the same time. What would that cause you to do? That would cause you to live a lukewarm life. And we would love for you to be there. <clears throat> But God wants us to surrender our whole life to him. And when you do that, you're going to have an incredible love for him, wanting to embrace, wanting to crave and desire his presence. That's where God wants to take us, is to where we have that intimate relationship with him. Like I was describing a while ago with the husband and wife, it doesn't just start off with hello and, hey, can I have your phone number versus an intimate relationship of being connected and united as one. As scripture says that he or she that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. So your spirit is here. His spirit comes in for y'all to become one spirit. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Section's over here. How about one over here? <laughs> Bible says... It is not I that live, but Christ yes. 
living in me. I want y'all to do something for me. I want y'all to hold your hands out in front of you right now. I want you to repeat after me. I want you to look deep into your hands. I want you to say, it is not I that live, but Christ living in me. Say it again like you really mean it, like you've never said it before. It is not I that live, but Christ living in me. This same spirit that raised Christ Jesus from the dead dwells in you. It enables you to live that life that's pleasing to him. Because if you're trying to do it wearing this, you can't do it. I had a time in my life, I'm, I'm very fortunate, very blessed to have godly pre uh, parents and raised in church. And as, I, as I've said, I was going to Lakewood in my mama's womb. <laughs> but thank God... I was raised in church, and Christian school, and having a great relationship with him. And I knew that and understand that, understood that from the very beginning. But unfortunately, do you think the devil, like me, having a relationship with him and living strong for the Lord? No. So, yes, I got sidetracked in my life. A couple years, disconnected with him. And we all know the difference between right and wrong. And you can say, you know, each, each day I'd wake up, I'd have that mental attitude saying to myself, okay, Lord, I'm going to live to please you. I'm going to make the right choices because we all have opportunities, a, a T in the crossroad to make a, a choice that, that we know that God wants us to make versus a choice that our flesh wants us to choose. And I would miserably fail over and over again. That's why it says in Romans 8, they that are in the flesh cannot please God. You can have some head knowledge of God, but if you don't have His Spirit and Him connected with you to where He, can, he helps you to live that life that's pleasing to Him, you can't do it on your own, but with Him you can do all things. God says that He takes our... So, so when you're... And it's a matter of getting in the habit of spending time with him each and every day. God wants us to, to, to crave his word. And, and a part of this, this robe of righteousness that transforms our life is a new nature that he places inside of us. Is it normal to go to church every day? For us, every Sunday? For us it is in here. Or people there online and watching this because they want they want to hear some word they want they want to gain some spiritual growth they want some spirit food, but for most people most people don't go to church most people don't have a relationship with God, but when you have when you receive when your life is transformed by this robe of righteousness by receiving Jesus you all of a sudden have new desires yeah. you want to go to church yeah. you want to read the Bible. You want to memorize scripture. You want to renew your mind. You want to praise and worship him. You want to talk about him. You want to hang out with other Christian friends. You want to listen to Christian music. You want to feed anything, things that are good that helps your spiritual growth and growing to know God and, and growing in your relationship with him to become strengthened so that you will be able to make it when the enemy wants you to come and put back on the old robe. But temptation will constantly come. The enemy wants us to, to sidetrack us and give us opportunities to do what we think we want to do that is totally displeasing to God. But you guys say, no devil, I'm not going to allow this to happen. I, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. I am well able to do what God has called me to do. I'm not going to say no to sin. I'm going to say yes to pleasing Him. Amen. Thank you, Mark. <laughs> now, the enemy will want to... Okay, remember how Adam and Eve, what, what happened when, when they messed up? God came down and they ran and hid because they felt why? Condemnation. Because they felt guilty for what they did. You're going to stub your toe. All you need to do is ask Him to forgive you. He instantly forgives you of all unrighteousness. He takes our sins and he throws them into the sea of forgetfulness and remembers them no more. Another scripture says, there are sins and iniquities. I will remember them no more. 
If God doesn't remember them, he doesn't want us to remember them. The devil will make you feel guilty, make you feel shame and condemnation. When you mess up, does it make you want to run, run toward God? When you mess up and you, and you talk bad about a friend of yours or something like that, and you know you shouldn't have, and you run into them the next day in, in Walmart, and you're, you're pushing your little cart down Walmart, and you see them, it's like, do you feel like running to them and embrace them? Hey, no, you, you want to go, go the other direction because you feel guilty, because you feel shame. There's a reason why God forgives us and doesn't remember them anymore. It's because he doesn't want us to remember them. The moment that you ask him to forgive you, he forgives you. He washes you and cleanses you of all unrighteousness because you're wearing the robe of righteousness, not in what you do, but because of what Jesus did, because he said, I'll go take the punishment for them. Remember how I started saying that at the beginning? The status of the relationship was limited to God coming down in the cool of the eve. What the devil intended for evil, God turned to good. God also wants to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we could ever ask or think. How much more do you think he wants to do that in our relationship? Amen. So our status of our relationship was him coming down. But now when we take it to that place, because of what Jesus did, we have access to God's presence anytime, any place, anywhere. It doesn't matter whether you're in Jamaica or whether you're in Colorado or whether you're in Alaska or whether you're in your house, it's really, really cold. <laughs> Amen? God is so, so big. He's the creator of heaven and earth and the moon and the stars and the galaxy and everything else. He is so, so big. But isn't it awesome to know that he's so big that he also desires for each and every one of us to spend time with him. Wow. He wants to take us to that place of loving him and knowing him and it comes from living a surrendered life. And like I, I want to say it again, about plugging in God's word. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Right, Sandy? <laughs> be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. It also says in Romans 8, because the carnal mind is enmity against God. For it wants to think the opposite. It wants, to think, it wants us to think contrary to God's will, to God's plan, to God's purpose. How much more do you think the enemy wants to try to come against us to try to keep us in this thing right here that keeps us from having that relationship with God? How much more important it is, is it for us to receive this word today, to have the robe of righteousness that transforms us and takes us to that place of loving God and knowing Him and surrendering your life to Him to where He becomes your everything to yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. Day four yesterday, I'm on a bulldozer. I'm out in Chapel Hill and I'm pushing dirt. Man, it was 30 degrees. My hands were cold and man, I, I, was, I was just, I was praying in the Spirit and I was just talking with Him and, and I was thinking about how much I love God. And I was talking out loud and I got really excited when I thought of the fact that there's, that I'm on this big loud bulldozer out in the middle of nowhere. My guys are, are a long ways away from me. Michael's in, Michael's in excavator loading up dirt into these trucks and they're bringing the dirt over to me. And I was, I was just, I was just talking with him. And when I realized like nobody can hear me except for me and God. And I, man, you know what that caused me to do? That caused me to get a little bit louder. I was so much enjoying it. I was so much enjoying loving this season of, of falling in love with God. To where you're mindful of Him all the time. He wants us to keep our mind on Him. He wants to be involved in everything, every area, every aspect of our life. Not just Sunday morning. 
not just 15 seconds or 10 seconds by saying a prayer before we eat or a bedtime prayer. God wants to be involved with every area, every aspect of our life all the time. And this, like I said, this robe here, let's use this as an illustration representing our flesh. This, the Spirit of God. Galatians 5, 16 through 26. The flesh is against the Spirit, and Spirit is against the flesh, and one is contrary to the other. Then we would love for you to live a stained life with this. But when you put on this robe, this robe enables you it's like you got to really, you got to really picture and just, just, just as I, as I, as I had y'all say that a while ago. It's not I that live, but Christ living in me. It's because the Spirit of the Living God lives inside you. Right. He enables you to do it because you are not doing it on your own. Don't try to do it on your own. Do it with Him, and if you're plugged in into a relationship with him of hungering and thirsting and craving his, his, his presence and, and just, just wanting to become saturated with his presence. Your life will be changed. And God, that's where God wants to elevate and promote us to that place of knowing him and loving him and pursuing after him to where if, if, if y'all would just get a hold of this and apply it to your life, your life would be changed. You could, you could turn back around and, and say, man, look how far I've come in the last week. And then you go and it's like, man, look how far I've come in the last month or a few months. It's so easy to come to church and get stagnant in the relationship and, and just you're just coming at here and a lot of people are coming here out of uh, kind of, yes, fulfilling a religious obligation. But it's so much more than that because God wants to take us that place of loving, loving Him just like Jesus loved Him. Yeah. Right. Jesus showed us an example of how to live and how to love God. Yeah. In John 17, Jesus prayed and said, Father, as me and you were one with each other, let them be one with you like we are one with each other. Yeah. Imagine going to that place of being connected with the Father just like Jesus was while he was on earth. We can all do it. You have him. When you have this transformed life by having the robe of righteousness, you have the indwelling of Him so that you can say, it's not I that live, but Christ living in me. And I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And greater is He that is in me than He that is in the world. And I am well able to do what He has called me to do because the greater one, the same Spirit that raised Him from the dead dwells in you. The same spirit that raised Christ Jesus from the dead dwells in each one of us. But what it takes is in John is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. Remember, life is all about a free will. We could choose to eat the forbidden fruit we could choose to we could choose to do these things the bible says that sin is fun for a season like i said at the very beginning the devil was jealous of the relationship the devil is a master deceiver the enemy will always want to try to bring temptation in front of you I remember just like I was, I was telling, telling my wife Jody just a few days ago that, that whenever, whenever something flashes across on my phone or when I'm out in public to look at something that I shouldn't look at that, that the enemy would love for me to look at, I so quickly so close my eyes or turn my head because 
I want to please God more than I want to please my flesh, what my, what my flesh might think it might enjoy, that the enemy would love for me to do, which is the opposite of what God would want me to do. But I am well able to do it because I have the spirit of him on the inside. And because, just like I said, that they that are, that are in the flesh cannot please God. But we are not in the flesh, but in the spirit because the same spirit that raised him is inside of us and he changes us and he puts in us that new nature that comes from him of loving him and wanting to spend time with him and spend time in his presence. We all got to get in the habit of spending time with him. And each and every one of us, we have our, that secret place, that quiet place that we love to do. My favorite place is to go outside late at night and just spend time talking with him. Mental telepathy? No. There's, I've debated this with somebody a few times. With the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. If we say unto this mountain, death and life are in the power of the tongue, I like to let it come out, the, come out my mouth. Because scripture says, for out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. God wants us to spend time with him. And just like how I said at the beginning, it doesn't start off with, hi, can I have your phone number? My name's Daniel. No, it doesn't start there. But as you start growing in that relationship, the Bible says that if we ask, we shall receive. If we seek, we shall find. If we knock, it shall open. And I say it as part of my daily prayer. I'm asking and seeking and knocking after you and after your presence and after your will to be done in my life. Not my will, but your will. Not my plans, but your plans. Not my desires, your desires. Not my words, but your words. Thank you, Jesus. I've, I forgot to look at my notes today, so I'm relying, I'm relying on Him because I've said it hundreds of thousands of times. Not my words, but your words. But when you're diving into that relationship and growing and connecting with Him, your life will be forever changed and transformed, and that is what's going to bring the acceleration in your life of where God wants to take you to where He will do more than you could ever ask or think, and this all comes from accepting and embracing that relationship that we have because Jesus said, I'll take the punishment for them. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you, Father, for this word today. Thank you, Father, for your presence in this place. I know, Father, that with this many people here, there's a chance that somebody in here might not have heard this message. Or they might not have accepted this. Or they've heard this message and they haven't accepted it because they thought that they wanted to live another way. But I thank you, Father, that you want to love them, that you want to embrace them, that you want to forgive them, that you want to have that relationship with them. Or there's also people in this place that once knew you, that once had a relationship with you, that once went to church, that once had that relationship and, and spent time with you and they were connected with you, but the enemy offered them opportunities to come in and, and do things that were displeasing to you and they got out of the habit of seeking you and having that relationship with you. But I thank you, Father, that the blood of Jesus is so powerful that we can accept and we can embrace that. So I want to offer everybody an opportunity to repeat after me. Say it with all your heart. Say it like you mean it. Say, Jesus, I believe that you died on the cross for me. You took the punishment for me. I believe you died on the cross and God raised you from the dead. I want to ask you into my heart. I want you to forgive me of my sins. Wash me. And cleanse me. Help me to live for you. And love you. And serve you. For the rest of my life. In the name of Jesus. Let me pray. Thank you, Father, for this word. I thank you, Father, that it sunk deep, deep into our hearts and minds. 
Thank you, Father, that our lives are changed. Thank you, Father, that, that with, your, with your spirit and with your anointing, Father, I thank you, Father, the words I've been speaking, Father, I thank you, Father, that they bounce around in our ears and our head, Father, and, and that we think about this and we meditate on this word. And I thank you, Father, for each and every word that everybody needed to hear it was the exact words that you wanted to use to help bring us closer to you, Father, and help us, Father, to keep on loving you and seeking you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thanks again for watching River of Praise. We hope that we inspired you, encouraged you, and if we did, would you please share this video with your friends and family? Also, if you'd like to support River of Praise, there's a link on the bottom of the screen you can click to give. Thanks again for watching.